Hello there, and a very warm welcome to Chazingra Chats, the show where we take a stroll through the life stories of people in the Pokemon community, discovering the six Pokemon on their dream team along the way. I'm Charlie Merriman, Merry by name, Merry by nature, a host and commentator for the Pokemon video game championship series and a content creator. And this week, I realize you can't see him. I am honored to be joined by your world champion for the video game this year in Honolulu, Hawaii. It is Luca Cherubelli. Luca, how are you doing? Hi, thanks, uh, Charlie. Um, I'm doing fine, like... Obviously, um, now it's been a couple of weeks after uh, words, so um, I had the time like to really realize how how much this result means to me. So, like, yeah, I'm feeling great. Fantastic, yeah, and we'll be getting into just how much that result does mean to you uh, later on in the episode. Yes, I'm sorry that you can't see Luca today, everyone. Um, Luca decided that it would be better not to have his video recorded, so you can see me, and you'll be able to hear Luca's audio separately. Um, so, Luca, I'm also aware that you don't have a huge amount of time, so let's dive straight into it. Let's discover a little bit more about you and the six Pokemon that you're choosing for your dream team. Now, I believe what we're starting with, Luca, is your very first tournament. Yeah, um, one of, like, I think the, like, if you wanna talk about the journey, you can't start without, like, your first tournament. So I started my first tournament in um, February of 2017 when I was uh, a senior division player and um, I just looked up from like the events in my area and there was uh, this uh, tournament in Milan which I decided to attend. I, at the time like I didn't really know much about uh, Pokemon the VGC to be honest. I remember like I was um, pulling up there with um, Giga Drain, Celestila, um, <laughs> uh, very weird things like Incineroar when it didn't not even have Intimidate, something like that. Um, so, but the tournament in, on its uh, on its own, like it it did go well. Like I went for and free, like playing with Master Division players. So. Uh, I, I think it was a, a good omen of things to come, but uh, <laughs> it just showed how how far away I was from where I am right now. Um, the most important thing, though, is uh, how I was able to make friends from the tournament, uh, which is the most important thing to me, um, because most of uh, the people I got to befriend there uh, became um, people like I'm still friends with, to this day so like i cannot uh, um i cannot really uh, emphasize enough how much like just going to a simple tournament meant uh, for my life because i managed to make um friendships that lasted like for more than a third of my life mm. that's fantastic that it was ultimately um the people that you met there that um were the most important thing as part of your experience. So when you were there and the tournament didn't really go your way, were you disappointed with the result or were you able to just move on from that and enjoy the people you were meeting there? No, no, I, I said like mm. four and three playing in the master division was like, was a good thing to be honest. Like mm. <laughs> I, in general, like I, I was very proud of the achievement um, <laughs> in looking back right now, like I say, uh, like I, did not have really have a clue on like what um how you team build how what you you have to bring to tournament what works mm. and like i still went four and three playing yeah. against master division players so like <laughs> even even now like i'm i'm pretty like i'm pretty happy with how i played there <laughs> four and three for um yeah not not really knowing what you're letting yourself in for is a really impressive achievement um and so Presumably, you, you went to this tournament because you had played Pokemon when you were younger. How long would you have been playing Pokemon for before going to this tournament? I just started seeing like Pokemon in a competitive way, um, just like a couple of months before. Uh, but like as a um, like as a just regular Pokemon fan, I just started uh, playing 
on the video game since I was uh, eight years old. Because, like, mm. obviously, like any kid, I begged my <laughs> parents to buy me Pokemon Platinum because uh, all, <laughs> like, all the people at my school were, like, watching the, the Pokemon cartoon. They're, we were trading the Pokemon cards. So it was just kind of like the regular uh, Pokemon Mania uh, that was, like, there at the time. So it just came natural, I think. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Would you say you met a large part of the Italian Pokemon VGC community at that very first tournament? Uh, no, like the good thing was that um, as much as I was a newcomer back then, um, after that, there like much more people started um, coming to events, like you get to meet new people. Um, so like in general, as much as uh, I was uh, the one who was like the the new face there uh the, like it also happened to other people and as time passed like you play events you like get to know each other better so you have like better ways to um, socialize with other people which i think is the good thing about it uh like but yeah. the good thing is that there were friendships i made from the very first tournament that are really important to me to this day mm. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm sure we'll be hearing more about those soon, Luca. But for now, let's discover what the first Pokemon is on your dream team. So as a reminder here, the aim for Luca is not to build the most competitively viable team. Uh, it's just the Pokemon that are most special to Luca in whatever way he can define. And I have no idea what they are. So, Luca, what's going to be the first Pokemon on your dream team? Okay. Um, like, obviously, like, I looked right now at my picks and they say, like, this is going to be a terrible team. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, like the first mon that I picked, like is Alolan Persian. Um, I think mm. like is like I just I just love how Persian looks. I it's goofy. Uh, like, it, like it's it's just goofy. Uh, it's a it's a cool like uh, change of pace from the original Persian, which I did not really like. It just seemed way too serious to me. Um, like it's important to me, especially because like. Uh, it's one of the first mons that I decided I would um, build around, like back in 17, like it was like a kind of a um, good but not great pick. Like there were teams like that centered around Persian, uh, offering like support, fast, like fast uh, fake outs, parting shots, something like that. Um, like, and I really, really liked that. Um, like it just felt like it was kind of like had kind of a higher skill gap than something so like obviously when you're like young uh, you're you're like pretty naive like you say uh yeah i want to be able to uh, outskill everyone so uh, it was one of the first months that i decided to pick uh here um like later on i think even like in the season uh after words and i like, graduated to master division um i always try to use that and in the end i think it paid off as I managed to win the Turin Special uh, that very year. Mm, a lowland Persian. Yeah, you're right. It, they, they, um, a lowland Persian does have a sillier angle to it than uh, the Cantonian Persian and uh, offers such useful options in uh, Pokemon VG. So a really excellent first member of your team. And you've segued perfectly there onto the next thing that you want to talk about, which is winning in Turin. Yeah, the second moment I want to talk about is um, the Turin win, where I managed to win just like seven months into uh, my Pokemon career. I managed to win the Turin special in the Master Divisions, which at the time, like, I think was, like, it was definitely the biggest um, tournament in Italy of 2017. So, like, it's very, very uh, important to me. Like, um, in general, like, I came in just, like, as a, um, as a, as a really a young kid um, with a team, like, I kind of built, built by myself, like, I saw, I saw similar composition and I decided to, um, to, like, add um, a few of my spin around, and so, like, I really did not expect it to go that well. I just was happy to f like play a turn play a tournament at a high level 
which um, like it really was my first time doing and uh, after everything i managed to win the the whole tournament which kind of was a surreal experience like um, there were lots of people like i was just spectating just like a couple of months before and i was saying like they're so good i want to like i want to play like them like i want to uh, achieve what they did and and like at the first tournament i was able to uh win against uh, against uh, those players so like it really meant a lot like it just like at the time like i maybe i didn't uh treat it as well like i just thought to myself i probably i'm way too good for this game uh, um like next time so uh, like this is like just the the starting path to greatness but <laughs> in general to be honest after that um a lot of events went downhill so um i i think especially like i was very very young at the time so i kind of went ahead of myself after that but in the tournament uh, in itself i was very very like i'm very proud of it mm. yeah well <laughs> as you should be wow okay so actually in a really short amount of time you went from going 4-3 at a tournament to winning a whole tournament so yeah clearly um clearly you had your head in the game would you say in that time in between those tournaments um you were working really hard to get better yeah um like in general like i think i worked really hard to get there um like especially like i got beaten a lot of times in local events <laughs> after i graduated the master so um like i think it was a learning experience altogether uh like the good thing obviously is that as uh, the quality goes up also like you kind of have to swim for yourself like you know so um, i had to um, uh, improve myself but also while you play against the better player it's easier to um, improve by yourself so i think uh, the the um, all the locals all the tournament i went with um that also like resulted in bad results like it really helped me uh improve on short as short uh, period of time yeah absolutely you've got to you've got to go to these locals you've got to maybe get results that you um don't end up being so proud of in order to ultimately improve and i believe correct me if i'm wrong in the final of the turin special event you went up against jamie boy yeah i i like, was playing jamie in the finals which was especially surreal like before i was talking about uh, people <laughs> i wanted to um like to be able to play with uh, and i really looked up mm. to like jimmy was absolutely one of them um <laughs> like the funny thing was that in turin the first uh, like we were um apart from each other like one seat uh, one seat apart in the player meeting and i just like introduced myself <laughs> there like i said i would like I told him how I was a big fan of him, um, just like, uh, like I, I was just saying that like I was admiring him, um, and like mm. he was super sweet about it. Uh, even like <laughs> on like on the tournament, he usually like went up to me, uh, asked how I was, how I was how I was doing. So like it really felt like a good like a good thing, and uh, like just talk to talk about um, some Pokemon with him and uh, like it ended up with us just being in the finals <laughs> yeah it, it just went like kind of a thrill like it just felt like kind of something like you only write in a story yeah uh, yeah but yeah like <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, um, I'm sure Jamie will be very pleased indeed to hear that. And uh, now, Luca, let's discover what the second Pokemon is going to be on your dream team. Who's going to join Alolan Persian? Um, the second team, I think, this is tied to, like, Turin. I, personal mm. Alola was, a, was as well. But uh, this time, like, um, I am thinking of, about Alolan Marowak, uh, which was a, a centerpiece of, like, the team I used in Turin. And I think it's special to me uh, because I was able to um, like add a little twist of uh, like my like how I feel like um, 
the game should be played. There's just like I used an unconventional Marwak set, um, which uh, was featuring um, sword dance and uh, an extremely, mm. extremely uh, bulky spread. Like it was like next to max HP, max special defense, and careful nature. So like it was very unusual at the time, and um, I and it ended up working wonders. Um, so yeah. like this is very important to me because um, I'm not usually one to uh, change things up a, a lot from like the standard team, but I usually like I enjoy like adding a few twists of my own, and uh, like Marwak was the first one that actually um, worked so well because obviously uh, I managed to win the the tournament. Um, it really like. Uh, push me like to give a little bit of um, effort on, on like um, just from taking teams and say like let's just roll with it um, like it like it pushed me to be very critical of uh, like the the things I bring like the like all like the the composition may be standard but you always have to um be able to adapt it to your specific needs so yeah i think marwak is uh the second important pokemon uh, in my career and what a phenomenal design as well fire ghost type pokemon um yeah i think that's well incredibly wise words yeah you've got to ultimately create a team that works for you it just borrowing someone else's team that they've done well with isn't necessarily going to work out so you've got lowland persian you've got alolan marowak both of them from uh, different regions from their original ones a lot of love coming out for alola right now and let's move on from there to talking about the london world championships in 2022 yeah um like i just kind of skipped a bit of there because like i said i after the arena was getting a little bit ahead of myself and uh yeah um in the after that um i got a lot of uh, negative results where like maybe it was because i was feeling i was better than what i actually was or just i wasn't like doing great at the time but in the end, uh, I had like a long, long streak of um, bad results, uh, mainly just, just due to me not playing as well as I could have. And it was very frustrating at the time, which was like a long time. <laughs> like this is like this spans hmm. from uh, end of 17 to like the summer of 2022, where like uh, most of the tournaments I went to, like I always felt like I wasn't up to the level of other players and it just felt unbearably um, um, depressing, to be honest, because like I just saw like other people uh, just playing better than me, uh, um, probably even having more fun than me. So it, it just felt like I was falling behind, and maybe like I thought I was not fit enough to uh, play Pokemon as much as I as much as I liked. So. Um, I was contemplating uh, stopping playing the game, um, but and uh, like there was the London um, words, and at the time like I just said to myself, um, I'm gonna put one last ditch effort onto onto this tournament. I wanted to go well at the time. Like I just wanted uh, to make day two in the World Championships because I never made a show at any other event before. So I said to myself, I'm gonna give everything I got um, to achieve uh, at least a day two in London. And if this if it this not, does not work, then it just means like Pokemon is not for me. So um, I, I just put all my effort into it. I even then like, I I'm not one to have high hopes for for tournaments, uh, but it like all the efforts uh, turned out to like really pay off because I was able to make day two, which was the first time I was able to do uh, to do that uh, in any tournament. So I was over the moon about it. Uh, the next day I was even able like to get one win away from top cut. Uh, he, like at my very first day too so uh, it really felt like um 
a turnabout moment for me because I was like on the verge of stopping playing Pokemon because I just thought that um, my my efforts were not enough. Uh, I thought I wasn't good enough to to play with uh, the best player in the world. Uh, but uh, after like after uh, the tournament, um, like. Uh, a little bit of, of uh, hope just sparked back on, so I decided to keep playing there. And uh, like <laughs> at this point, I'm lucky I did. Yeah, well, I was gonna say that's so incredible to hear that you were considering quitting the game, and then you decided, well, I'll just give it one last shot at London Worlds. And now, obviously, fast forward a couple of years, and you're the world champion. But then, even then, just missing out on top cut at London Worlds that must have been. Must be incredible. What do you think? I know you said you put a lot of effort into those London Worlds. As you were playing through the tournament, did you feel like you knew what you were doing? You felt like you were on top of things. Did you feel confident going in? Um, like I said, I'm always uh, pretty doubt- doubtful of how the <laughs> the tournament will play out. Like the night before, I, <laughs> I always say to myself, like this is gonna go bad. Um, like it just mm. like it goes like this even like to this day. But <laughs> like I said to myself, well, um, I think it's gonna go bad. But I really did all I all of like, all I could. So this tournament will r- like really prove if there is something there. Or is it just better to um, like accept accept that I'm not gonna be able to play with the best players in the world? So yeah, like it just felt like um, like um, a test. Like you you see, I I really was just going there to see if I was able to uh, uh, play um, at a good level. Um, after that, like I really wasn't that interested. After after day two, in fact, like in day two, uh, I went quickly one and two, and uh, like I was saying to myself, um, well, like it's okay. Um, I already managed to get what uh, I wanted. Everything else is just on top of that, and like it ended up with me getting one win away from top cut uh, and just like losing there. It, like it's the, it was much more uh, difficult to like take than being eliminated before because obviously like at this point you didn't even expect it but uh, uh, you were so close to like uh, an important cornerstone of uh, like a Pokemon career like top card in the world championships um, so in the end like I still had some like regrets but just because I I think I beat more than I could chew, but it still wasn't enough. Uh, so, mm. like, I think it helped. It also helped, like, uh, reigniting the spark um, with, with Pokemon because um, I, I got what I wanted, but uh, at the same time, I still, like, I realized I still wanted more. So, yeah. Wow. Um <laughs> Yeah, that's absolutely fascinating. And I think the the fact that you, you know, the night before any tournament, you'll say to yourself, oh, this isn't going to go well. I mean, I guess maybe what that means is you take the pressure off yourself in the actual tournament. And uh, so, yeah, clearly, clearly it works well for you. And hopefully you're now starting to believe a little bit more in the performances you can put in. So let's go from there on to what the third Pokemon is going to be on your dream team. So who's going to be joining Alolan Persian and Alolan Marowak? Um, like I put Lunala just because I really enjoyed playing Lunala, uh, like across the um, VGC nineteen through like twenty two. It's just uh, like it's just a good Pokemon overall. Um, I don't know if it, like it reflects how my play style goes, but uh, like it was so good um, in general that I always tried to play with it. Also, like, I use Lunala, uh, that very words. So, like, it kinda is like, um, an, like, it kinda is a, a important Pokemon in my journey because uh, <laughs> it kinda saved my, my career there. Hmm. 
Yeah, well, uh, a lot of gratitude is coming out there for Lunala, such an important Pokemon to you. So let's swoop right over from there to the next World Championships, Yokohama. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yokohama was kind of different in it that um, I, I, I went to Yokohama with a very different um, mindset because um, that year... I finally like managed to like snap uh, snap uh, to back to myself like I I don't know how to describe it but I was finally able to like produce um um not like not uh, incredible but uh, consistent results like I I got top 16 at three straight majors and then managed to top cut the Turin special again <laughs> mm. uh, this time like I couldn't take it all the way but I I still uh, managed to uh, cut um, a regional again after so many years. So um, I, I went to Yokohama with a far different expectation of uh, London, and um, this like this I picked this one because I managed to make the issue. But in the issue, I I got outplayed, um, so it really went bad. Like I went um, one and three in the day two competition and I just um like I just stopped playing because there was no point in doing that. And uh, at the time like I was really really bummed out like I I like wasted my opportunity to may maybe make getting it to Top Cut. But uh, I realized one thing one important thing there was that um this was like something i like this was really what i was preparing for the the previous year like uh had the had it went like this the uh, in london i would have been over the moon because i i had made it to day two so it really like felt like um an important step on my journey because uh i like i realized how I was changing my goals, like um, something that uh, the the year before would have been uh, like something for me to be proud of. Like it became something that um, I was like I was treating as a bad uh, performance overall. So um, even if it's um, like kind of a um, history of a failure, like it goes in my career as. A fail, a failed attempt. I think it's really important to uh, include it here because um, it really, really um, underlines how, like, how my perception of myself had changed over just one year. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really, um, really wise point to make there. So Yokohama might not have gone your way, but again, it's it showed that you had that hunger. You knew that you could do better uh and of course paving the way for how worlds this year went but before talking about any of that what's going to be the fourth pokemon that's joining your dream team alongside alolan persian alolan marowak and lunala um like i was thinking in the end uh, like i decided, decided to go with venusaur like i couldn't really really find something from strictly from yokohama so i just picked venusaur from like the previous year um to be honest, I really don't like Venusaur, Venusaur uh, but I used it in in the London words, and like <laughs> it's 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 weird to say it's just kind of like um, something to say like sometimes like you have to uh, be friends with your enemy. Uh, I really don't like Venusaur, but sometimes like at the time it was probably the best pokemon i could use in in the composition i was using so like i don't know really if it makes any sense but um <laughs> sometimes i you, like you have to acknowledge that um maybe your vision isn't the um, like the, the the best one so you have to take in account like other people what other people see and I, I took a lot of advice from um, from like my friends and like they all said no 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 um, you're wrong you have to use Venusaur because like <laughs> it was the best Pokemon over overall and like I managed to like I used that and I managed to like produce produce something out of it so like it's weird to say but in general like I think it's 
kind of more, more like like it means that you like you cannot take uh, everything for granted just because like you think so and you have to um, like take inputs from uh, your friends because they're there to help yeah. you yeah, absolutely um sometimes you have to be friends with your enemy i uh, i love that just very briefly why aren't you a fan of venusaur just in general i didn't like um using sleep powder <laughs> that much but in the oh, end, I see, I, yeah. like i said <laughs> that but in edwards i ended up like using sleep powder a lot of times so uh it kind of feels um pretty <laughs> hypocrite to say <laughs> obviously because i i use it so much but uh in general like i'm not really a fan sure yeah sleep powder is not the most accurate move so yeah you've got to hold your breath whenever you use that so venusaur joins the team before we get on to worlds euic this year you want to talk about and as in in the 2024 season yeah um uac was the first time i managed to cut um a really like a super major event uh, because I after and in general like it was the first time I managed to top eight uh, a tournament outside of Italy, <laughs> so it kind of hmm. added like more of a um, international dimension like to my game like as because I at the point I really said to myself I can make it to uh, to the top level of um, the competition. I remember um, a couple of like months prior. Uh, that uh, like I was talking with my friends uh, and Arashomati said that he expected me to be able to make it to the top cut of the world of uh, both world championships and and UAC and uh, like I was getting uh, like I said like that's not gonna happen I'm not good enough um, in the end like I decided to go to London because I wanted like going to Hawaii is a pretty big commitment so I wanted to be sure I was able to, like to play at the, at the best of my capabilities um, going into words so I, I used it as a test to myself and it did end up uh, going super well uh, very proud because I faced a lo like a lot of top top players and I was able like to stand my ground to them so like I'm really proud of that. And at, at the same time, uh, I ended up with a result I'm really proud of, but I was still like one, I still had like a little bit of regrets because I like, I thought to myself, I like, I could have gone all the way. So yeah, it, mm. it's just um, improving on, upon like the, um, Yokohama. This time, like it was a, sup a result I'm super proud of. But still, like, I mm. felt like I could have done even better. I'd say that's kind of, if you wanted to go to EOIC in order to prove to yourself that uh, you should go to Honolulu, that's possibly the best result you could have asked for, really. Doing really well, but then knowing that you could have done more. Um, because then it gives you that fire to continue on to Honolulu, uh, whilst also proving that you absolutely deserve to be there. So... This is also a yeah, really wise perspective to decide. Yeah, Honolulu is a big commitment, so I want to make sure that it's going to be going to be worthwhile. And of course, it proved to be more than so. So before we get into those Honolulu World Championships, Luca, who's going to be the fifth Pokemon joining your dream team? Um, I'll put Ironance there. Uh, really, I wasn't. Um, I was kind of undecided between Ironance and Region Bolt because like I used Region Bolt in UAC but in the end like I went with Ironance because it just feels more like a concept to be honest. Ironance is just like <laughs> um, a good Pokemon, a solid Pokemon which is um, something that uh, along the way I had to uh, accustom myself into. Uh, like one of the main things like in the first like the first times I was uh, like the first times I approached Pokemon, I like I thought like of those like Pokemon's were, like, were which were like very solid, uh, pretty slow. Um, they uh, consistent but not uh, very much damage. I really did not like them because uh, I like I said I wanna play fast, I wanna be offensive, uh, and so I really don't like them. In, f in fact, like my my Turin, my Turin team in 2017 was like uh, Fasta Puffini, Fast Cartana, Persian, um, Mimikyu, 
Marowak and like Snorlax, which is actually like has, has a lot of bulk, but like it goes to plus six with Balladrum, so it's not something uh, that um, takes a lot of time to get going. So, and uh, after that, uh, one in the like in the last years, I started like using those those uh, more of balanced moons such as Iron Hands, uh, mm. Raging Bolt, even like Tinglu before. I think Tinglu was the first uh, first instance of uh, a similar mon I was using. And just in general, I like it. Uh, it up to my game, and um, like right now, like I'm very glad I did because I'm like I'm starting to appreciate it. Appreciate it, where like uh, you don't need to um, kind of like win the game on the first turns, but uh, like you can just. Um, have a consistent plan, and often, oftentimes, those um, those mods are really the centerpiece of like a solid game plan. So, yeah, I really like uh, um, now those um, like those type of mods. As I said, like Iron Hands is more like a concept uh, rather than the Pokemon itself. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, well, you've got to try different playstyles in order to keep your approach to the game fresh. And yeah, of course, those more balanced Pokemon are there in order to provide a backbone so that the more offensive, potentially frailer Pokemon can thrive as well. All right then, Luca, it's time to get into Honolulu 2024, the World Championships this season, where you emerged the champion. Uh, yeah, obviously, I think this one was the, like the most anticipated, obviously. So, um, yeah, it just feels weird to talk about it because, like, it just, like... We talked about the previous um, achievements, and like it's just such a big jump. Um, like getting to the top of the world was not something I anticipated. Like it's something everyone dreams, but not like not everyone can just picture it coming to reality. And to mm. be honest, I didn't uh, as well. Like I was in when I was in top cut at the world championships. Like, as I said before, I was already super um, happy about it. Probably um, it could have happened just like USC, just like uh, London, like where like you get uh, way too um, complacent with your uh, with what you already achieved that you don't realize like you could have done more. But like mm. I, I was playing like in... Like peace for peace. Like in in the tiebreaker, I said that if I if I win this, I'm gonna make it to the top sixteen, which uh, like is super great. Then like I won that in top sixteen, I was able to like I was saying if I win this, I'm gonna go to top eight. Then uh, then like just on and on. And then like after winning top four, I thought if I win this, I'm gonna be like wait, I'm gonna be the world champion. So <laughs> it just felt <laughs> like. Like it's it, it was so weird in general, but uh, and uh, like I'm super anxious in um, as a whole. So uh, after realizing that, <laughs> I can I say that like it was really really nerve wracking. All like the preparation, all the like because like there was almost twenty four hours between the top four and final. So it was super super. Uh, difficult even like uh, analogizing tomorrow i can be the world champion uh mm. and pro probably could have crumbled under pressure but uh really with the help of my friends i was able to um um like stop put a stop to that and like they helped me all the way uh from testing to like supporting me uh cheering for for me so uh i think the like the final um like the final turn where i just where my opponent forfeited and i like just jumped down and went <laughs> to hug them um like i think it really goes to show how much uh, like they mean to me and how much i think they they helped in my in my tournament as a whole Mm. The friends that you made all the way back at that very, very first tournament that you spoke about earlier in the episode. Absolutely phenomenal run there. Now, before the night before the World Championships, did you say to yourself, as you always had done, this isn't going to go well? 
Um, more, more like in the like in the morning because mm. uh, I was so nervous after um, making it to the finals that uh, like I said to myself, I'm trying not to think about it uh, at least for, like for the evening because then I'm not gonna sleep the night. Uh, mm. So like we went to a nice uh, barbecue to celebrate uh, with like all like all the friends. Mm. Um, like it was like it, which uh, ended up like being a, a very good evening, a very good dinner. So uh, I'm glad it like I took my mind off of it because really, if uh, I were to think about it for all the all like. All the, the time, I would have probably fainted on the spot. Like you know. <laughs> going through those first two days of the tournament, I mean, you were clearly taking each game as it came. But did you believe that you could go all the way? Uh, to be honest, uh, I don't think I didn't think so. Like mm. I was still skeptical, even like in top four or something. Um, but yeah, sometimes. I, you're not the best judge of character, mm. even like of yourself. So I'm glad I was able to like prove myself wrong there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, absolutely phenomenal. And the final question on this front is in that finals against your opponent, your opponent was running a really interesting team and involved Iron Valiant that we uh, don't tend to see that commonly in VG or we haven't in the regulation set G format that the World Championships were using. How nervous were you about the, that specific team? Uh, I was pretty nervous. Uh, in general, I f like at, at first glance, like I thought I was really done for and I really couldn't do anything about uh, that team. Um, especially like I tested with my friends in the first cyber, like I was getting better left and right. But after like after uh, testing it out uh, a lot more. I like began seeing like there were like um, things I could exploit like there were things I could exploit like uh, it had very few dragon type uh, resistances so Midrider was very good with um, mm. with Draco Meteor uh, like in general I saw like there, there were plays that I could make to uh, really put put myself into a lot of advantage mm. in general like after um, reviewing it. I'd say like the matchup is kind of like at worst a 50-50, at best it will, it's slightly in your favor. So, mm. um, so like in general, I, I think uh, like I didn't beat a, ba a bad matchup in the finals. I just had a, like, I was lucky enough to face it like in the finals where like you have uh, basically one day to prep and I had all my friends who helped me like uh, craft uh, the better uh, game plan I could. Mm. Yeah, well, fascinating. And again, huge congratulations on that, Luca. So now it's time to discover the final Pokemon that's going to be joining your dream team. Yeah, the um, best uh, the best six Pokemon, I think, it's, it's grown to be like my favorite Pokemon at all, like as a whole. Um, is uh, Fire Ogre Pond. Uh, I just liked it. Um, obviously, just on the fact that it's like it's a cute Pokemon um, with an interesting design. Like it's just it's the first thing I thought of uh, going into Honolulu. I'm gonna go to the Pokemon Center and, go, and I'm gonna buy the Ogre Pond plush. Um, but in general, I think uh, like it's kind of like the perfect uh, Pokemon for me because. I like usually to be able to step on the gas um, <laughs> with offense, and Ogre Pond like it's the best, it's one of the best Pokemon doing that because um, it can offer a support role which I really enjoy. Like I like to be very offensive, but have like turns where I can um, completely help my offense be able to just uh, uh, sponge attacks a little and uh, just go back to offense. So and Ogre Pond like it's the perfect Pokemon for for that because like in general it has a good defensive type, it has um, optimal supporting moves uh, like fo follow me obviously is the best one of the best moves in the game where 
like it allows you to um, to slow things down because um, it pulls a halt to your opponent uh, trying to uh, KO your other Pokemon. But uh, it just functions well on its own. Where at, at some point, like you just say, I'm just gonna use the Terra button. I'm I'm going to get the plus one in attack with uh, Ogre Pawn, and all of a sudden it turns into um, and when it KO machine. So. Um, like maybe I didn't describe it as well as I could have, but um, Ogre Pawn right now it's like the fa- my favorite <laughs> mon in the whole game. So fascinating that even though you've played Pokemon for so many years, your favorite Pokemon is one of the ones introduced really very recently indeed, and uh, makes total sense that Pokemon was of course on your team that won the Honolulu World Championships. Ogbon wearing the Half Flame Mask uh, can wear three other masks as well, but with the Half Flame Mask, a Grass and Fire type. So then, Luca, now it's time to ask you: out of your dream team, so out of Alolan Persian, Alolan Marowak. Lunala, Venusaur, Iron Hands, and Ogapon Half Flame. Which of these are you going to choose to be your partner Pokemon? Uh, 100% uh, Ogapon. <laughs> it also yeah. like uh, Makes total sense. the best Pokemon t- you can just run around the fields with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like Lunala is just gonna like float on its own, so it doesn't really feel like you're running together. <laughs> Marowak. <laughs> <laughs> like Maruk is way too it's way too short. Like it's, you're not you're not gonna even see it in the tall grass. Venusaur and Iron Hands <laughs> just look way too too slow. So like they they wouldn't catch up. Persian is the, was oh, the, wow. So yeah, Persian was the other uh, um, was the other option. Yeah. But in the end, that's just the one. So you're thinking really in terms of, you know, Ash and Pikachu running around, who's going to be there alongside you? Love it. So Ogobot Half Flame is going to be a partner Pokemon. Slightly different kind of question now, Luca. If you were a Pokemon, what do you think you'd be? That is a tough question. I <laughs> I love to think about it. I could see you as an electric type, maybe. I could see that. You think so? Um, yeah, I can see it. I'm trying to think what Pokemon that could, um, what electric type Pokemon you could be. Um, obviously, you use Maridon on your Honolulu team. <laughs> are, are you vibing with the electric type, or do you think you'd be a different type? Um, I'm not sure. Like, I I would pick it to myself, but uh, now that you say that, I can I can kind of see it. I I think like mm-hmm. it also like encapsulates my my view of how like you should play Pokemon. Hmm. Sure, yeah. How about an Electabuzz? Could you see yourself as an Electabuzz? Ah, uh, no, I really don't like Electabuzz. <laughs> okay, well, uh, if if you had to choose an Electric-type Pokemon to be, what would you choose? Um, like, I think, like, it just has something to do, like, with speed, like, speed and offense. Uh, probably okay. Tapu Koko, like, I think Tapu Koko is a, is a good, is a good, uh... Tapu Koko, okay. Yeah, I can see that. Like as a whole, like it's it's a like it's a good pick, I think, because it offers mm. like it has both like means of being very fast, very offensive, but at the same time, it has a lot of other like uh, uses, as a, mm. like a supermon with a soul vest, or like as a as a berry a berry mon which sets up like electro web, light screen, stuff like that. Mm. In the end, like it's just um, like. Probably, yeah, Tapu Koko. Yeah, no, I like it. Electric Fairy, I can see that. I can see that for you, Luca. Do you agree? Let us know in the comments if you think that Luca would indeed be a Tapu Koko out of all the options. And speaking of you all, time for some questions from you. I posted online, as I always do, asking for questions from the community uh, for our world champion for the VG, Luca Cherubelli. Some fantastic suggestions here. Going to have to scroll through them now and decide which I'm going to go with. So... Question from As the Pokeball Turns podcast. Really interesting here. If you could add one new held item, what would you add? To be honest, there are. There were like. I got asked, uh, like, I got asked a lot of like questions where, like, what, what would you add like, as a mechanic in the following game? What, what item? I, I, like, really, I don't know, to be honest. Uh, um, one thing, like. I liked. The, I sometimes I saw like some like some suggestions like you you get an item that gives like one point of speed 
uh, one additional point of speed, which is I, which I think was very funny. So um, since I can't think of anything else, like I'd say that it's 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 a it's a cool concept. And it speaks to how you enjoy the fast and heavy offense uh, coming out from the Pokemon that you use. Thank you very much for that suggestion of a question here. This is a question from Jade Dragon VGC, and um, really interesting story here. Would you recommend your team to a newer player? My sister was a big fan of you after World's Finals and wants to get into VGC. So um, thank you for that, Jade. Would you recommend your team to a newer player, Luca? Um, it's hard to say, I, because I think like the... Like it has a weird curve of um, of like of skill it requires to play. Like I think in the like at the very early stage of like your skill where like you're playing um, other other people of your like beginning at the beginning of their journey, I'd say like it's probably one of the strongest because it just has way too much offense for like um, non-expert people to. Um, uh, counter after that mm. at the like at the medium level i absolutely would not recommend it because um once like people uh, become uh, better at, at the game like they uh, they can just um like they know wh- how to switch how to like put yourself out of uncomfortable situations um like it's way harder for um for like the team to function, especially because you have to, um, like you have to uh, understand like the the concept of trades, like when when you can just sacrifice your Pokemon to get an advantage. So um, it gets like at the at the intermediate level, I would not suggest it. At the highest level, uh, probably like I would, I ob- honestly I did not expect to to win it with um, with Miraiden. Uh, at words, I just went with what I was most comfortable with. Um, after like the tournament, I'd say um, you can go very, very, very bad, but you can also go very good. Like it just like depends on how you feel that day, um, how like confident you are in the play you're making and such. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah, clearly at the highest level, it can work very well indeed. It goes to show, you know, you didn't believe you could do it with Moridon and the team that you had, but you did. So it can happen to anyone. You just never know uh, what's going to be on the cards. And really useful advice there, Luca. So thank you for that question. And thank you for your advice, Luca. Lion of Demise, what region would you start your Pokemon journey in from generations one to nine? Um, I really like the Unima, so probably going for uh, for that, yeah. Hmm. Generation 5 speaks to you. I bet you said that Pokemon Platinum was your first Pokemon game, right? What was it about Unova that you preferred to Sinnoh? Mm, I think, like, it was a lot of, like, the fact that, in general, it was the first generation I, like, I was able to enjoy from start to finish because, like, I I bought Platinum, so, like, I didn't even, like, play Diamond and Pearl, so... Uh, like in general, I, I just really like the the cities, the um, mm. um, the soundtracks. Um, just like the the map feels, like, the map really feels just cool mm. on its own. So like, yeah, I really I really just like that. It's more like of a, of a vibe than anything else. Yeah, well, sometimes that's all we need. Thank you for that really interesting question there. And final question from Alexor94 what would be the number one piece of advice based on your own experience and mindset you would give to any player aiming for the world championship title um like judging from uh like my whole experience the first time the first thing I have to say is um don't sell yourself too high I think because like you have to be able to accept that sometimes um, what you think is not uh, the correct way of thinking. Uh, sometimes, like you're just wrong. Sometimes um, things like are not working out because of you. And uh, also, like this ties for with uh, the other advice I'd say is uh, uh, make as many um, connections with people as you can because um, having friends. Uh, who you can talk uh, with Pokemon with 
uh, is uh, the best thing about Pokemon, really. And also, if you have, like, having friends that um, can help you, like, see the errors you're making and just in general improve your level, um, like, it's the best thing. In general, I'd say those two are the best advice I can give. Mm, yeah. Be prepared to admit when you're wrong and surround yourself with people who want to help you improve. Because then, of course, the people you surround yourself with, they're friends outside of Pokemon as well. And you're a testament to just how much of a journey you can go on with those friends, helping each other improve along the way. Well, thank you so much for all those questions. And if you want to submit a question for a future guest on Jazingra Chats, you can keep an eye on my ex at Jazingra. I'd love to hear what you'd love to hear. So then, Luca, we've heard a lot about you up to now. What's next for you? Um... It's a hard thing to say as well. Um, hmm. For now, I want to uh, finish my degree in statistics. Hmm. And after that, like, we'll see. Um, I want to also uh, get a master's degree. So I will think about it as well. Uh, from a Pokemon uh, standpoint, I think there's still lots of improvement I can make to my game. So... Um, one f- uh, it's one thing I wrote in the my like the thread for for words is uh I never thought like at all I would say now what do I do after winning words so like it <laughs> I was not prepared for it but um the first thing I like I said to myself is I'm not letting like win words be an interest like to my growth as a player like I think I still have. To, lots of ways to improve so i'm not like just uh hiding behind i won the world championships i can like either mm-hmm. i i i just i just reached the, the pinnacle of what i can achieve uh in my opinion i can still get better and so uh especially like the next year will be much more focused on um like feel on improving how how i feel about the game uh, about my gameplay uh as a whole instead of like focusing on results uh, like i have to do well here i have to do well there i just like i want more to like to be able to go to tournaments and say i'm confident i can do well here (laughs) Mm, yeah well uh really interesting to get your perspective on that having won the world championships in terms of what's next for you and yeah the game is ever evolving and so our skills have to ever evolve when playing the game as well so uh fascinating to hear and very excited to see what will come out from you in the future perhaps we'll see you becoming world champion again who knows i mean you've certainly got the right mindset to continue to improve so thank you for that luca and final question for you now looking back from now as the VG World Champion 2024, all the way back to that very first tournament with Giga Drain, Celesteela. What advice would you give to that young you? Um, don't kick yourself down while you're at it, I think. Um, in ju- I, I think I am way too humoral uh, because I get uh, way too over myself. Uh, if something goes well and way and way like under myself, like you, it's not it's not a term, but just um, I just kick myself down when things don't don't go well. So maybe mm. um, like what I like what I, I would say to my younger self is uh, generally uh, it's a game, uh, treat it as one because uh, mm. especially like. Uh, in like the um, the period from seventeen to twenty twenty two, wasn't like wasn't the best for me because I like most of the times I go to events, uh, do bad film roles. So, uh, yeah, don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're not having fun playing a game, then why are you playing the game? Fantastic advice from you, Luca. There, thank you so much. Really fascinating to get your perspective on things. Uh, from the world champion, I mean, a title that so few people in the world can say they've achieved. Thank you for giving us all of your advice. Now, ordinarily, there would be a rapid ash round here. There would be some bonus questions for Luca. Unfortunately, that's not going to work out this time around. But uh, we'll see you very soon for another rapid ash round. And Luca 
who's given us so much food for thought. So do drop a comment on your thoughts from what Lucas uh, told us or any of Lucas' six Dream Team Pokemon tying up with your own favorites as well. Do let us know in the comment. And I and Luca especially would be fascinated to hear. Luca, thank you so much for joining me on the show. It's been really, really, <clears throat> really fascinating to get your perspective on things. So thank you. Uh, thanks to you for having me. <laughs> no problem at all. It's really an honor to be able to speak to you. If people want to keep up with you online, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter, um, like uh, Sari VGC. Uh, I said Sari. Uh, I conditioned myself is Cherry, but uh, like it's read as, as like an Italian word. So uh, yeah, he's a C E R E E uh, VGC. Thank you very much indeed for that, Luca. And if you want to follow me as a creator and a caster, then I am at Chizingra on X, Instagram, TikTok. We've got my YouTube channel where this very podcast goes out, as well as streaming uh, Pokemon games competitive all the way up to casual play as well. I've got my Discord community linked below. Would be fantastic to see you in there. Also on the YouTube channel, I vlog the events that I cast. So there's plenty for people to get involved in. If you're a fan of everything that the Pokemon video games have, have to offer then it is the channel for you and i really appreciate you listening to this episode today plenty more episodes on the channel to get involved in and episodes will drop every wednesday so then that's about it with that being said it is goodbye from luca bye everyone and it's goodbye from me see you next time on chisinger chats where there'll be another six pokemon one life story